you doing? Just listen to music. This is now over a month since we've had live Premier League football. Normally, my weekends consist of me um, in the evenings watching football, watching the Premier League, in fact. My Saturdays have uh, tended to be, or Saturday and Sunday would be from like early evening until the last game. So it could be like starting at uh, eight o'clock in the evening, going right through to one or two o'clock in the morning. So I'd watch the, the sort of main thing would be Gillette Soccer Saturday, which meant the main games were on, the scores and stuff. And then the late game, I'd come tend to watch late game. If it was a big game, if it was a crappy little game, I wouldn't bother, but it was something like say Liverpool versus Arsenal or Liverpool United. So I'd probably stay up for it. I've got no dog in the race. But I would dearly love to see Liverpool win. Also, my buddy, FIFA saved my life, Paul. It would piss him off immensely because he's an Everton fan and he hates Liverpool doing well, so that's always entertaining. <sighs> I'd like to see. <laughs> that's mean, I know. But I love Jurgen Klopp. I think he's by far the most charismatic and cool manager in the Premier League. And I think he's got Liverpool playing very, very well. It's a, it's a damn good team. Um, so that's kind of... I can just hear people behind me. They've got balcony, that's cool. We haven't got balcony in our house. Um, so yeah, so my Saturdays and Sunday evenings now are just, well, they're different. It's just like any other night now. Um, what we tend to do is me and my wife will tend to, after dinner, we'll tend to go upstairs and sit on the bed or in the bed and uh, watch a series or a film. At the moment we're watching Star Trek Picard. Don't get me started on Star Wars with Star Trek. I'm very much a Trekkie. I like Picard because it's a damn good thing. I'd stopped watching Star Trek. It's not like I just watch anything Star Trek. I stopped watching Star Trek a good few seasons ago, but Picard was always a good character. <sighs> so, yes, yeah, so um, sad news today is that America has now passed over half a million cases. They've got over 19,000 dead, so... Um, so kind of what you have is you have these different states making their own ways of doing things. So if you don't stop every state from having like public gatherings, like going to church, um, in Malaysia on the 14th, on the 18th of March, they shut the schools, they shut the mosques, they shut the churches, they shut the temples, they shut uh, non-necessary shops, um, restaurants, can only be open if they're doing takeaway. Um, so there's no sort of eating in. And uh, that's a massive culture in Malaysia. Malaysia, most people in Malaysia, a lot of people in Malaysia, I'm sure never have a cooked meal at home, home cooked meal, because they all go out at night. Food is cheap. And that's how people roll. <sighs> anyway. Uh, one thing I have just enjoyed watching was Sunderland Until I Die, which is on Netflix. Um, Sunderland Football Club, we've, we've kind of fallen on hard times. We've fallen from the, the Premier League to the Championship down to the First Division. And I don't really have any sympathy for them. I don't have much of a soft spot for Sunderland. I'd rather see Sunderland doing well than Newcastle, but that's a whole different thing. Um, but when you sort of see the fans, you've got a guy there who was funding the living dialects at them. Okay, they weren't successful. But he was basically writing two or three million dollar checks for them every month to survive. And all they were doing was just like giving this guy absolute hell. Um, so quite rightly, he's hold it. But he, to be fair, I mean, I think it's amazing. He basically sold the club, the debt free to a consortium or another group. Um, and the guys that got it seemed to be sort of fairly smart business people. They wanted to um, make the club self-sufficient which I think is the first thing that football needs to do full stop. The amount of clubs that like, I saw, I saw a thing last week, Reading, their wage bill was 226% of their income. How can you do that? A lot of clubs it was like 101% of their income, it's just their wage bill, let alone everything else. Um, so you know, clubs are just doing it wrong. So these two guys came in, or the consortium came in, mainly two guys, they were like, right, We've got to cut this, we've got to do this, we've got to do this, we've got to make changes. And they made a mistake. They had a, a superb young striker that they let go 
and then they rushed out and sort of then spent probably two or three times more what it would have cost to keep this young kid to get another striker. Now the guy was on a roll, I think he scored 17 goals and they were, they were like top two or three in the league. As it turned out, they got through to the playoff final and then went to Wembley and lost the playoff final on penalties. But I think if they'd kept this young guy, first of all, it probably would have gone up. And I think that if the guys that sold him look back now, they probably realise they'd made a mistake by not keeping him because, okay, they've had to pay more wages than they wanted to. But this is a young striker that comes through their academy. If he had one or two successful seasons, they sold him for one and a half million, which is nothing. They then paid, I think, three or four million for another striker to replace him. The kid wanted higher wages than they were offering. If they'd made the wages up to what he wanted for one or two years, it still would have cost them less than replacing him. And I'm sure they, if he'd have been successful, which he looked like he was going to be very successful, they could have sold him for significantly more than 1.5 million. So they fucked up. But what's happened is the fans have just been like on their case the whole time. They, of course, the owners want to sell again. They want to get rid of the club. And that's because the, the fans, it's like, yes, you're a fan. You, you, oh, we own the club because we're the fans, fine. You guys reach in your pockets and you fucking fill the holes that come into the balance sheet. Because...